Hello, everyone. So today I would like to, to offer a transmission and a kind of an insight uh, about the, the aspect of our life, which is related to who we are, to our identity. So the transmission is going to offer powerful healing of our identity, invoking the most important frequency of our soul, which is the frequency of love. Most of the people, unfortunately, at this point of time in this cycle, in this age, are not familiar with this frequency, even though we have industries devoted to producing movies about love or uh, talks about love and relationship. From my standpoint, the biggest problem of this current population is actually the lack or the inability to maintain or remain in this frequency of love or uh, not being able to actually um, act upon it in the most crucial points uh, in our lives. And henceforth, all these problems about inability to actually maintain uh, quality relationships and most of the people in this world are actually not experiencing the frequency of love, uh, but have a story of how they would like to have love and how it would be manifested in a tangible way in their lives. And because of being in love with what that person could potentially be for them or with the love of uh, being in love with the story, around them and let's say someone or love in general the kind of an idealistic version or some kind of a fan fantasy version uh, creates more delusion and takes our society more and more away from what the actual frequency of love is and so certainly this frequency is beyond words but if I were to put it in words I would say that um love is beyond thoughts and it's a frequency which allows you to flow to express yourself freely to uh to to be so flowing and giving and natural and authentic and generous without trying a lot of people say that they tr they are trying to love someone they're trying to perform in the relationship they're trying or making effort well when you're truly in that frequency of love you're not trying anything you are that and unfortunately most of the people fail to simply be that because and how do you know that it's because when you have these moments of clashes of these moments of uh, conflict so these moments of misunderstanding uh, between people, whether it's a romantic relationship or any other relationship, friendship, colleagues, you tend to go from the standpoint of um, your uh, limited self rather than you actually uh, act upon love. And acting upon love means choosing peace and resolution. And most of the people choose um, gossip or uh, going behind someone's back or uh, choose retaliate or choose, um, I mean, choose to retaliate or choose to hurt someone one way or the other, even in their thoughts. So when you have uh, an imitator with someone in your thoughts uh, or emotionally you carry that resentment, you already block the possibility to uh, love anyone and that's why it's so important to do the inner work and it's it's not just about watching you know binaural or some other videos and transmissions which allow you to somehow artificially uh, tune into that frequency like as if you were uh, popping drugs uh, and having that high for a while it's rather actually facing the pain because this this is a paradox that most of the people don't want to get is that in order to be 
in that frequency and bathe in that uh, fulfilling uh, being of your soul, which is the frequency of love, fulfillment, contentment, whatever you call it, bliss, you need to first face the, the blockage, what blocks you. And even though people talk about opening chakras or opening your heart, it's very difficult because most of the time, the personality, that, that broken self or the piece of that broken self is a stumbling rock uh, and it's on the frequency level. Uh, it's, it's a pattern that the person uh, faces again and again when they have a choice between, say, fear and love, or when they have a choice in life to, let's say, um, come humbly and resolve a conflict. Instead, most of the people choose not to go and open up and speak their heart out or have heart-to-heart -heart conversations, but they shut down. So they have traumatic responses. And when people have traumatic responses, it means uh, spiritually speaking, their heart is blocked or they, there is no authentic flow of self-expression. When the person is aligned within themselves, they are peace, they are life, they are joy, they are love, and they are also energy. So if they are peaceful, it doesn't mean they can't be active, but they just choose to uh, operate in a wise way, meaning they choose to distribute their energy wisely so and they interact of course with with the creation and in, in that kind of a wise way but at the same time their system remains always open and that's what the uh, meaning of having your heart open means it doesn't mean you're a foolish person who just are uh, constantly there uh, looking for i don't know an adventure where you give out pieces of yourself to other people. No, it's more about that you are really there for people and they can perceive your warmth. They can perceive your openness. They can perceive that love even when you don't say anything, but they know that they can rely on you. When people operate from the traumatic standpoint, uh, they are unreliable. And so most of the people look in relationships for consistency, reliability, commitment, but they can't understand that that sprouts out from actually being rooted within that higher frequency of love where you are able uh, in the moments of crisis or conflicts, attention to operate from that, overcome your ego and act from humility, choosing peace, choosing resolution rather than choosing your trauma, shutting down, avoiding, I don't know, uh, lashing at someone or trying to suppress your emotions and, and um, refocus on something or distract yourself. So we are to face the pain, which indicates the stumbling rock that doesn't allow us to actually feel that love at all times. And this stumbling rock is felt very well when there is a clash, a conflict. That's why I always encourage people to face conflicts rather than avoid, to understand that this is the only way for you to evolve spiritually, to, to reflect your, your own persona uh, while interacting with others. And so when you have these blockages, you will have a reaction. This reaction will always be felt in your solar plexus. And that's how you can understand that no one can actually uh, break your heart because when you're operating from the frequency of love, you are at that mode of acceptance rather than condemnation, self-righteousness. But when you're hurt at the solar plexus, it's almost like your energy cannot go further and you feel that anxiety, you feel that sense of I'm nothing uh, until you, with humility, overcome it or you let go of something that, some kind of a narrative or a story within you about yourself or about circumstances. And actually, once you overcome it, suddenly... It's like your vessel is filled with that gushing energy that uh, brings the sense of uh, contentment and rootedness. So, uh, and 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 
when people want to have their heart open, it means that they also wish to face all that pain that precedes that opening. And to open the heart means to each time choose love over the limited self. So, and when we speak in terms of commitment, a person who is not has not discovered the frequency of love cannot simply commit commit. And I've already spoken about it in my other videos about commitments and relationships. So you can check the playlist best advice on relationships because there I share a spiritual perspective on many issues that people face. But the biggest issue of all is inability to commit to the soul. So when we speak of love, we speak of commitment to the soul. And when we speak about commitment relationship, we speak about commitment to love, which means to the cultivation of your own soul through the means of relationship. It also means to see and to be open to see the point of view of the other person, to be the present for the other person, to be open to understand their pain in a mutual way, in a reciprocal way. It's also a realization that love does not exist in one-sided relationships or love does not exist uh, in a superficial way where suddenly people shift or change or abandon. Because in that case, love has never existed. Love has only existed to a degree um, which was suitable or comfortable for that person. And they chose that idea of love um, and held uh, onto it until it became irrelevant for their reality because something else became more interesting. That is not love. Love is a sense of contentment within oneself. And only when you find another person who is able to cultivate that contentment within, only then you can actually be blessed truly and experience the sense of a true fulfillment through love relationships and true commitment and when there is that frequency of love there is never a question of um where do we stand or uh insecurities or uh lack of safety or lack of appreciation or bickering or anything like that all that is just a uh reflection of own trauma that's why i've been also saying uh, many times that people get married to their traumas people get into relationships in order to heal their traumas by reflection but everyone wishes love and unfortunately while you are facing your traumas and ping-ponging them or reflecting upon them whichever stage of your evolution you're in you are not able to actually experience that true higher frequency of love and most of the people who play certain games or um, go into these modes of avoidance or anxiety or abandonment they mostly they, they have never experienced love they have no, no reference point until you actually manage to break through the uh, paternal maternal patterns and all the traumas and all the uh, ancestral corruption that you've uh, inherited and only then if there is that kind of a true desire of the soul to restore its connection or with the body to align itself with the body that it it pushes one to awaken to that and that's actually also another way of uh, speaking about spiritual awakening because spiritual awakening is the awakening to that higher frequency of love all whatever you experience in glimpses before that that is not awakening that is some sort of a just partial experience of um, higher frequency in glimpses because there are too many bales too many stumbling rocks too many obstacles within your own soul that take you away from that actual uh, establishment or being rooted in that higher being and so to be rooted in the higher being means to align with your vessel meaning the soul is aligned with, with the vessel and the vessel starts emanating when you emanate love you emanate an amazing soothing energy that attracts others and others also start awakening just because of that 
So when we speak in terms of spiritual awakening, if the vessel is not truly really emanating love, that they cannot transmit love to awaken other souls. All they transmit is their own intentions, emotions, and other low frequencies. Certainly people can transmit all kinds of frequencies, but who in this world knows of the frequency of love? Very, very few ones. And this transmission is a powerful awakening and Shaktipat. Shaktipat means you connect to that higher being, which is kind of collective, and at the same time, it is still relevant in the physical sense. And if you are a living soul, it will touch you. There are not so many living souls at this point. And so if you're that still a living, somewhat wholesome soul, it will touch you to the core. It will create shivers. It will create a real electrifying being which will take you out of a limited paradigm. And as we are now uh, between the eclipses, it's a powerful transmission that will help you to deal with whatever you are dealing because eclipses evoke or invoke all the uh, negative programs for them to be um, released. And so this transmission will also help you to release whatever um, is there at this particular point when you're watching it on the surface. So the more you release, the the further you will be facing subtle and subtle levels that need to be released. So this transmission is not just for one time watch. You can uh, watch it once a week or less and then work with whatever comes up. So intensity should be defined by you and by the way you can handle certain pains. And again, these pains can be activated or triggered by someone else, but do not blame someone else. Observe what you feel and only work with what you feel with your reactions and learn to just aff to, to affirm um, that you release these patterns and um, learn to return yourself into that space of self, which is unconditional, which accepts yourself and anything that is happening at this point in your life unconditionally without any predicament or judgment or, um, you know, I would say victimized perspective. But of course, if, if the victimization arises, just be in it without a story. So just relax and uh, turn within and you don't need to do anything. Even while I'm speaking, the transmission is already going on. And the frequency of love is activated. Your heart is truly open. You want to embrace the whole world, not in a foolish way, but you connect your spiritual intelligence with the heart. And it changes the entire perspective of the world. You're no longer a victim of the world or of your body. You are that which is aligned with the body and which governs the body into balance. When you're tuned to the frequency of love, you are an emanation of balance, the emanation of truth. Love itself is the healing frequency which activates within your entire body, which purifies your channels, which releases all the negative stagnant energy from the cells, from the organs, from the glands, and opens the path to higher knowledge. As long as you're not established 
in that frequency. That frequency cannot, the other frequencies cannot allow you to access the higher frequency of knowledge, which means knowledge of a higher level. So you're just deluding yourselves. When you truly open, you perceive tremendous humility and grace and gratitude at the same time. How can't, how can't you then resolve the problems between people? You see them as no problems at all, as no conflicts. The, the forgiveness is there, but also wisdom to not to allow certain energies to come to you. And the frequency of love itself creates an impenetrable shield, a protective shield against the negative energies of low frequency. And so this becomes your way to be aligned with a higher being. Higher being means knowledge, means awareness, means bliss, means just all-knowing. And the more you're able to cultivate this in your body, the more your body restores, restores to its original state stops losing energy, stops aging, decaying, rotting, it heals itself from women. This is the ultimate fountain of youth, this frequency of love. Most of the people cannot feel, cannot act upon, because there's no alignment. Even if they feel for a glimpse, there has to be an alignment so that it starts penetrating the level of your actions. It starts being your signature then how can you hate? How can you wish others bad? How can you look into other people's gardens? How can you want anything that doesn't belong to you? You're so focused and absorbed and bathing in your own bliss that it just emanates and fulfills you and your space. What else do you need? And those who are in need of this frequency can draw to you. But they have to cultivate that frequency, otherwise there will be frequency mismatch. And that's why everyone is encouraged to work on themselves and learn to let go, learn to be realistic about life, about the purpose of being here and precisely relationships which are so vital for the human evolution because of the element of reflection. Because when you are at that stage where you are not established in that high frequency of love, by reflection, you can neutralize a lot of programs which don't allow you to be on, on that higher level or ascend further. which throw you on the periphery of evolution instead of actually being in the center. Because to be in the center means to be so much absorbed into that higher level of being, which cannot hurt. It emanates love, which cannot stay in conflict because it's so easy to resolve it which doesn't judge, just acknowledges. Which reveals the darkness, but is not trying to escape from it, condemn it or hurt it. That's a different level of being, which we as humanity have barely discovered We've heard of it, we read of it. We've projected our own limited ideas on it, but we don't know how to integrate it, how to be there at all times, how to deal with the external reality through that frequency, how to actually just uh, emanate it without trying. 
because that emanation in itself is the highest of all teachings, at least for the earthly realm. And when we've connected to it, we have shifted, something has been realized and the seed of awakening is planted. Everyone is constantly awakening on the levels, awakening to their ignorance, awakening to their patterns, awakening to certain aspects, limited aspects of them that they are to dissolve. When love is permeating, you are in the flow. You're not in love with the story of another person. You're in the flow. You are the example of love. And if you see it's not reciprocal, if you see the other person's not, you can support them. Or you may choose not to participate because the frequency doesn't match. It's very difficult to build anything with people who treat love and relationships as transactional because if you are emanating love but they don't know love it's difficult to build anything with them until their heart cracks open and the flow of bliss contentment and humility pours into them from their own soul and they cry the tears of devotion to the soul and realize their blindness, their ignorance, their limitations through that humility that's so rare. Then they see how mere all these, how petty all these things that they argued about were. But for everyone it takes time and this time is defined by the level of their openness to the soul. Your heart will open. And you will perceive a spiritual diamond there. The core of your soul that is indestructible, that is immortal, that is eternal, that is ever potent in its creative sense. And all your other glands and centers will align to it and will be supported by it. Feel the blessing and the touch of your own soul. A new path is set and open. Thank you very much for watching this transmission. If you benefited, you may share it. 
you may subscribe, you may donate to support the channel. And many blessings to everyone. Stay wise, stay calm, stay hydrated during these eclipses and be open to learning because when you're open to learning, you're open to life, you're open to your soul's journey to become the best version to return actually, not to become anything, but to return to your authenticity. To have your heart open means to remain authentic. To be authentic means to be aligned with your soul, the highest of all frequencies, whatever frequency you can reach in this life and align with your physical vehicle. That is your highest frequency. And if you hold on to it, meditation becomes your natural being. You're naturally charismatic, but in a humble and wise way, rather than narcissistic. You are absorbed, aligned, blissful, rather than self-centered. You're nurtured and healed by your own wisdom and by your own higher being, which is the frequency of love. Thank you.